are doing a letter now. First of all, we'll go down and read the writing task. Using the information in the case notes, write a letter of referral for further treatment to Portmore Arthur's Dr. Andrew Kretzer. Address is given. So we are referring a patient to do a palm analysis. Right. Well, let's see who the patient is. Let's go up. It's given that we are the registered nurse of this clinic. Mrs. Dilma Eggleston presented to the clinic complaining of shortness of breath and persistent cough. Um, date of birth, height, weight, allergies are given. So, patient's name is Mrs. Delma Eggleston. Now, regarding her social history, she lives with her husband. Husband is a non-smoker, likes gardening, doesn't drink or smoke, sometimes takes detailed quid. Uh, family history, none to report. Alright. Now, remember that we are writing this letter to the pulmonologist. So, here, lives with her husband. This is not important. So, we can avoid that. Husband is a non-smoker. Um, we are we're focusing on the patient, right? Not the husband. So we can avoid that. It's not relevant. Doesn't drink or smoke. At the same time, she takes beta quit. We'll include this too. All right. Medical history. Um, there are some history like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, stomach ulcers, ankle injury, and COP. Now, we are, we'll be just writing about the COPD. Now, regarding the medications, uh, nothing related to COPD, so we can avoid that. So what she presented with, uh, she presented to the hospital, no, to the clinic, with intense scuffing, pain in the chest, shoulder, and back pain. Shortens of breath, change in voice, harsh sounds with each breath, change in color, and volume of sputum. Right. So this is important. We need to organize them together and um, write a sentence. Maybe one of those sentences. Right. Regarding the diagnosis and examination, we took an took uh, a chest X-ray, which was not clear. So we proceeded to, uh, proceeded to a CT scan, which was positive for lung cancer. Right. Stage two. Tumor is 5.5 centimeter. Cancer cells spread across lymph nodes. Right, so let's write this letter. Now, as always, we'll write the recipient's name, Dr. Andrew Kretzer. Then, the address as follows CT Hospital, 27 High Road, Newtown. That's now, we'll leave the line, we'll write the date. Possibly today's date, right? We we'll leave a line, we write the RE section. Uh, we are referring. Patient's name was Mrs. Delma Eggleston. We put a comma. DOP, 18 March 1972. I will write the introduction. As this is a referral letter, we can start like I am writing to refer Mrs. Eagleston. Oops, before that, the salutation. Yeah. So, dear Dr. Kretzer, now we come to the introduction. So, where I was, yeah. I am writing to refer Mrs. Eagleston. Uh, from the case note, it is uh, evident that we don't have to write uh, a lot of things in our letter. So, we'll elaborate as possible as we can, but make sure that we do not write a story. So, I am writing to refer Mrs. Eagleston, we put a comma, a middle-aged woman. Uh, she, she would be something 44 or 45, something like that. Always you can write the age. A uh, 44 year old 
women. Something like that. Or after that, we put a comma. Into your care for further assessment and treatment. Now, she was diagnosed with lung cancer uh, during the hospitalization. This was a recent diagnosis. And it's quite important that we write this thing, the diagnosis in our introduction. So let's write, she has been diagnosed with lung cancer. Right, so our introduction is done. We have the purpose, just an overview of our purpose and the diagnosis. So our purpose is clear and um, the diagnosis that's clear. So that makes a very simple and clear introduction. Coming to the first body paragraph. So what's important next? What's next? Definitely it is what she presented with. This is something uh, uh, important for which the pulmonologist is, is curious to know about. All right, so let's see the case note. Intense scuffing, pain in the chest, shoulder and back pain, shout of breath, change in voice, harsh sounds with each breath, change in color and volume of sputum. So there are a lot of things uh, we cannot make, uh, just we cannot write down all of them one by one in one single sentences that won't uh, read good. This indicates that your writing ability is that poor. So we need uh, to have some organization here and there. All right, so what we can do, the intense scuffing and change in color and volume of sputum, we can write these two things together. Ms. Eagleston presented to the clinic with complaints of intense scuffing associated with change in color and volume of sputum, comma, shortness of breath and change in voice. That's done. Or else, we can make use of colons here. Mrs. Eagleston presented to the clinic with the following complaints. We put a colon. Intense stuffing with change in color and volume of sputum, comma, shortness of breath and change in voice. Right, the next thing, uh, pain in the chest and shoulder. Back pain, uh, that's not important. We can, we can write or we can ignore, that's all right. So she also had pain in the chest and shoulder. Now is that correct? Pain in the chest and shoulder, that's wrong. We cannot say pain in the shoulder. Pain in the chest, that's correct. But pain in the shoulder, that's not correct. So pain in the chest and over the shoulder no, uh, and around her shoulder around her shoulder all right after that we can put a comma and write and complaint of harsh sounds in each breath now uh, what we can do we can write about the examination in this paragraph itself but uh, this this film, the paragraph will look lengthy. So let's make a new paragraph of that. Here we go. We have made a new paragraph. Here we write about the examination and about the diagnosis in TT. On examination, we put a comma. Chest X-ray reveal unclear results. Right. In the case, it's given not clear. So we have just uh transformed into sentence like chest x-ray revealed unclear results and it's given CT scan then we proceeded to a CT scan which was positive which uh, had positive results for stage 2 lung cancer so what you can do we can put a semicolon and we can just elaborate that thing consequently comma a CT scan was conducted that's done. I'll complete that sentence. Now we are going to write about what the CT scan show. The CT scan confirmed positive because we cannot um, uh, 
continuing the same sentence, the sentence may look long. And this may confuse the reader, but we cannot include a lot of parts in our sentence in one single sentence. The CT scan confirmed the diagnosis of now why we are writing the diagnosis because we have already mentioned about the diagnosis in our interaction. So we are writing the diagnosis. That's a specific information, that's a reason we have for the diagnosis. So the CT scan confirmed the diagnosis of stage 2 lung cancer. Right, so in the introduction we just wrote about the lung cancer, so we have just elaborated it. We have not repeated the information, but we have elaborated the information. Stage 2A lung cancer. Right, after that it's given about a tumor. So what we can do? Let's let's write down we put a comma with a tumor size. of 5.5 centimeter. Also let's put a we can put a full stop and we can make a new sentence. The tumor size um, the tumor currently measures 5.5 centimeter. We put a comma and cancer cells are spreading across the lymph nodes. Right. So that's done, that completes this paragraph. Now, the next thing is a medical history. So as given in the case one, we just see that, uh, we have just seen that um, a lot of history. So we are just focusing on the COPD. So her medical history is easy, uh, significant for problems related to COPD since 2012. Now, it's important about the smoking, as well as drinking, as well as about the beetle quid. Right. Uh, so, we are going to include this in the same paragraph. Her history, as well as her, um, what she's habituated to. Now, regarding the smoke and uh, smoking and drinking habit, um, she doesn't drink or smoke, that's given in the case note. Now, if uh, you are writing a letter to, to a district nurse or to a social worker, some, somewhat like that. Um, then if in the case where it's given that the patient does not drink or smoke, you can avoid that. You don't have to write that if the patient doesn't drink or smoke. You don't have to mention that thing in your letter. But over here, the case is different. You're writing this letter to the pulmonologist. So the pulmonologist, um, uh, it is quite essential to write that she doesn't drink or smoke. The pulmonologist is curious to know about that. So if you write, Mrs. Eagleston doesn't smoke or drink. Put a comma. However, we put a comma again. She has an habit of taking beetle quid. Okay, in the case where it's given some time, so let's change it. Beetle quid on occasions. So we have written all the important things, uh, right? Um, as per uh, what the polymorphist requires to know about. Now we come to the last part. Now what I can, uh, uh, always the last paragraph, uh, uh, we, we are elaborating our purpose, right, or our request. So we should make sure that um, while writing the introduction, you just write an overview of your purpose and you elaborate it with, uh, with proper wordings and sentences in the last paragraph. So what I thought in the beginning I'd write about this thing, I can include this thing, pulmonary function, in my last paragraph. So I'll just write it down here. Considering the above, comma, it would be greatly appreciated if you could assess Mrs. Eagleston's pulmonary function and provide suitable treatment. Here we go, we put a full stop. Then so you have your own style and 
make sure you write the sentence properly without any grammatical errors so that it is very clear and easy to understand by the reader. So that's done. Now we will leave a line. We write the final sentence. Please contact me with any queries. Yeah, before that, now this letter is something um, which are uh, certain assessments and examination reports. So we can just include this line, uh, all the pertinent details. No, all the pertinent documents are enclosed of it. Right. So we will stop for stop. Please contact me with any queries. We leave a line. Yours sincerely. We leave a line again. Registered notes. So in the case where it's given registered notes, so we write registered notes.